What up, everybody? It's your boy, Ash. Happy Friday. Hope you guys are having a great week here in awesome July. I'm coming to you guys today with a One Piece Theory video. I'll be talking about Ace, Yamato, their relationships, and their plan for Wano Kuni. So last chapter, chapter 984, we got the introduction to Yamato knowing Ace. And he, she said that Luffy reminded her of Ace or somebody reminded her of Ace. So really, really cool that Ace's connection in Wano runs really, really deep, not only with Tama and the uh, um, Amigasa village, but now with Yamato as well. So I wanted to bring you guys my thoughts on Ace, his relationship with Yamato, Tama, and what their plan was for Wano and why Ace maybe left Wano instead of trying to do his best to kind of fix Wano. So a little bit of background on Ace and his time in Wano. So in chapters 911 and 912, we've uh, were introduced that Ace was in Wano and that he landed ashore next to Amigasa Village. And when they landed ashore, Ace and his crew were bound up and he allowed the villagers to eat all his food and he built a relationship with them. And it goes more in depth here, but if you've read the manga series, if you watch the anime, you kind of get to learn about what Ace did in Amigash Village and how he and Tama got along so well. But that's really all we get to know. We don't really know what else that Ace did on the island or what he did or how long he actually stayed. It's just stated that he stayed for several weeks and that's it. We don't know anything else that he did, where he went, if he traveled around Wano. So it's really interesting. But when Ace arrived in Amigasa Village, he built a relationship with Tama. And it seems like, or is meant to be implied, that he just stayed in Amigasa Village the entire time for the several weeks and just helped the villagers and helped them find food and kind of as protection from Kaido and the Beast Pirates. So he didn't really do anything significant that we know of. But a lot of us speculate that there is more to it that, especially now that it's, uh, we know Yamato and Ace, had some sort of relationship. So really interesting that Yamato brought that up. And of course, Luffy's gonna be super, super interested because Ace is involved in anything that Ace was involved in. Luffy is obviously super interesting because he loved his brother. His brother did amazing things, but uh, moving forward, it seems like Ace, it's stated by Hitetsu that Ace landed in Wano about four years ago, uh, prior to the current storyline. So two years prior to the time skip. And Ace was not even on Whitebeard's crew. So Ace was on Whitebeard's crew for a very, very short time. I don't know if we knew how long Ace had been on Whitebeard's crew, but it was a very short time. So within two years between Luffy's start of his adventure and the time skip, Ace was on the Whitebeard Pirates or maybe even less than that. So really cool to kind of get a little bit more information when we first started Wano Kuni. But Ace really joined later on, and he wasn't on the crew very long, but that relationship he built with the Whitebeard Pirates was very, very deep. So we learn about that, and then Tama was about four or five years old. I don't think we really know how old she is, but she's around four or five, which means she's about eight years old, eight or nine years old now. So her memory of Ace is very, very strong, regardless of how young she was. Ace made a huge impression on her. He kind of molded her and gave her a goal to look forward to. So when Ace and them were about to leave, Tama really wanted to join the crew, but Ace said you need to be a strong pirate to join the crew or a bewitching Kanoichi, which one of his members was like, does she really have to be bewitching? So a little weird there, but we knew Ace didn't mean anything crazy by it. He just wanted her to be a beautiful Kanoichi, to grow up strong, powerful to join his crew. So really cool relationship between Ace and Tama, but what led Ace to leaving Wano Kuni? We know, being a One Piece fan, the Straw Hat crew, when they land on an island, they always deal with the problem, whatever it is, before they leave. So if we know Ace, and he has a very similar mindset to Luffy, why didn't he stay to help at Wano? So my thoughts on this is, as Ace was on Wano, he stayed for several weeks, he was obviously traveling around Wano. He didn't just stay in Amigasa Village, like we are intended to believe he did. I believe he traveled around Wano, kind of seeing the damage, seeing what Kaido and Orochi had done, exploring the different villages incognito, trying to stay undercover. He didn't want to bring the wrath of the Beast Pirates on Amigasa Village where his crew was stationed. So I believe he tried to do it as secretly as possible, which is why the Beast Pirates probably didn't know he was on the island, or if they did know that they really couldn't find out where he was. So 
It was, I believe that as Ace was traveling around, seeing all the damage and the terrible things that Kaido and Orochi was doing, he was starting to get fed up with it. He's starting to get angry to see that Tama and her village were in pain and all these people were suffering. You can't really blame them. I mean, Wanakuni was in bad shape and even worse shape when the Straw Hats arrived. So as Ace was traveling around, I believe that when he was in the Curry region, kind of exploring maybe the run, ruins of the Odin Castle, that's where he ran into Yamato. And as Yamato, like she stated, or he stated, that she spent some time in the ruins of Odin Castle where she found his log journal, his book, of his adventures with Whitebeard and um, uh, Golden Roger, that he ran into Ace. And during this confrontation, I'm sure Yamato wasn't in her normal form, that she was wearing uh, her Odin kind of cosplay outfit that she was wearing when she first met Luffy. So that explains why Ace maybe didn't recognize her and kind of thought, saw her as a threat. And this may be, uh, or this may have been the initial confrontation that she had with Ace that she mentioned to Luffy uh, earlier in chapter 984. So that initial confrontation may have been a tough one if Yamato and Ace saw each other as threats and they kind of went not all out, I can't imagine them going all out against each other because that would bring in a lot of attention, but they had a good solid battle, enough to put them both exhausted or to kind of kind of see what each other's strengths were, to so kind of feel each other out. And if they felt each other out and kind of started talking, they realized that they had so much in common that it would be hard for them not to become friends at the end. So. After their initial confrontation, maybe Ace and Yamato started talking and they both realized that they have huge father issues. So obviously we know about Ace's issues with Goldie Roger, that people's comparisons to him, that he, people don't believe that he deserves to live because of what Goldie Roger did. We know Ace really took that to heart. All he wanted to do was be loved, to belong to someone. And we know that based on his conversation with Luffy right before he passes away. Was it okay for me to be born? is what he says, which is like one of the most heartbreaking scenes of all time when he passes away. But yes, Ace, you deserve to be born. You're one of the legends. We love you, Ace. So I just had to get that out there. But yeah, so as Ace kind of describes his pleas with his father, Yamato probably did the same thing with hers. So Kaido and Yamato obviously didn't have a great relationship. She says that Kaido even pummeled her for being an uh, Odin fanboy. So because Yamato's love for Odin and Kaido's huge, huge reputation that Yamato obviously had a lot of angst against her. My puppies are doing the Aussie 500 right now. But because Yamato is Kaido's son, Kaido obviously has a huge reputation and obviously influences Yamato's life. So I'm sure without even realizing it, or even realizing it, not wanting all the attention. Yamato is meant to be the successor of Kaido. So because of what Kaido done, people are gonna project that on Yamato as well. She's gonna be the new head of the Beast Pirate. She's gonna be the ace of the crew. Whatever the expectations were for Yamato, he obviously did not want any of it and has a gripe with the father because of the execution of Odin, which he was aware of and present for. So. That's a really interesting point. And as they go back and forth between their conversations about their fathers and what they want for Wano, obviously Yamato wanted to open the borders of Wano to create a peaceful, happy place that Odin dreamed of. Ace obviously wanted a similar thing for Tama and the rest of Wano to create a peaceful environment where Tama and them could have food, could have or be safe on a daily basis. So if they started talking, obviously they'd come together and try to form a plan to create a happier place to push Kaido and Orochi out of Wano for good. So as they started talking about this, I'm sure Ace tried to convince Yamato to take out her father and help him to do so. But as their conversation went on, maybe Yamato tried to convince Ace to not only leave Wano, but to go get help. And that's why Ace left. So that's my thoughts on why Ace may have left. Yamato asked him to leave to go get a bigger crew, to go get help, to get stronger. And then the prophecy that Toki predicted is a few years off. So when that prophecy was supposed to come to fruition, maybe Ace was supposed to come back with not only a stronger crew, but himself being stronger. And then when the nine scabbards show up, Yamato would be stronger by that point as well. And maybe this is when Ace 
talked about Luffy, that Luffy is starting his journey soon. And by time the prophecy is coming to fruition, Luffy will be a strong pirate and he'd be a great ally to Ace and Yamato's plan to take out Kaido and Orochi. So that's kind of my thoughts that Ace only left to get stronger, to get a bigger crew, to get help. And then when the prophecy was coming to fruition four years later, to come help out and push Kaido and uh, Orochi out of Wano. So that's really like the only explanation I can think of of why Ace would leave. Not, I don't think Ace would leave because he's too weak. I mean, Ace is a strong-headed guy like Luffy. They're not just going to run away uh, from a situation they think they can do something with. And they're not going to leave people behind. Even when Luffy was fighting the Admiral on Sabaody, he made sure that his crew knew to escape. But he was going to stay back and help out as best he can to make sure his crew made it out alive. But once his crew got <laughs> bopped away by, by uh, Kuma really saw the devastation in Luffy's eyes. He was going to do everything possible to make sure his crew made it out. And I believe Ace was the same way. He wasn't just going to leave Tama and them to suffer, to be in pain without having a goal in mind or a goal to reach for. And maybe he explained that to Tama and the rest of the Amigasa village that to stay strong, that he'd be back in a certain amount of years to help them out and bring help along with them. So that's really the only explanation I can think of. And Yamato stayed behind to make sure that she got stronger to maybe learn as much from Kaido as physically possible, which is why she uses some of the same moves to kind of progress to get stronger as well. So when the time arrives, so when the prophecy came to fruition, she'd be ready, he'd be ready to fight Kaido at full strength and to really assist Ace and Luffy when they showed up as well. So those are my thoughts on Yamato and Ace's plan for Wano Kuni that Ace left to get help, Yamato stayed behind to get stronger, and when the prophecy time was up, that Ace would come back with the Whitebeard Pirates, possibly, or a stronger crew in general, and help take down Kaido. Obviously, things didn't go well. Ace died at Marine Ford. Luffy, obviously, is getting stronger, has gotten much, much stronger since the two-year time skip. So maybe Yamato had been waiting for Luffy all this time, but I don't know if Yamato knows that Ace is dead. Uh, we know that Ace, or that Kaido is a Yonko. So he gets all this information. It wasn't a huge secret that Ace died. So Yamato being under Kaido may have gotten this information, knows that Ace is no longer alive. But because he mentioned Ace in this chapter, we'll see if he thinks Ace is still alive or if Luffy has to break the news to him like he did to Tama, he'll probably do it very bluntly again. So we'll see what happens and see what Yamato's feelings for Ace were, whether they were partners trying to take down Kaido together or if there was something else going on and Yamato stopped Ace from taking out Kaido and pushed him out of the village or out of Wano so he wouldn't cause a ruckus and ruin the prophecy, the plan that Yamato had for Wano. So maybe Ace left Wano in Yamato's hands but promised to come back for Tama at a later date. A lot of things coming out of chapter 984. I hope this was a fun uh, review for you guys here. A lot going on. I have more thoughts, but they're all like jumbled up in my head. So I got to get them all in order. I took notes here, but as usual, it's hard for me to follow notes because I just love to talk about One Piece and love all these things that come with it. So hope you guys enjoyed this. Comment below with your thoughts. What is the relationship between Yamato and Ace? Hopefully you guys enjoyed that. And do you think Ace left without having a plan or did Yamato and Ace kind of figure something out and Ace left to recruit more people? to bring stronger allies with, and Luffy as well when the time arrived for the prophecy. So let me know what you think of my theory, everybody. Comment below with yours, and I'll see you guys later. Enjoy your weekend. Peace. See you later.